So the past couple weeks, we've been talking about the subject of mind trap and um, thoughts and thinking God thoughts. And um, so we learned about the power of our thoughts and what happens in our mind when we think things long enough. Um, we learned that we are what we think. And our theme scripture is Proverbs 23, 7. In the Passion Translation, it says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. And so tonight, um, we're going to wrap things up, and we're going to learn about negative thought patterns and how to change them into healthy thought patterns. So I want to warn you ahead of time, there's going to be a lot of slides and a lot of information on the screen. Um, and at the very end, there'll be a QR code and you can download um, a lot of this information because um, we're going to walk through how to take a, a negative lie and how to apply the word to it. And so I want you to be able to leave here with the tools to be able to do that in your own life. Amen. So I think it's, you know, it's super important and, um, you know, God's word tells us that we can do it. So I believe that we can do it with his help. And um, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, if you can learn this one skill and ability, it will change the course of your life. And um, Sunday night, I kind of mentioned to you um, about, you know, just waking up and deciding, hey, I'm going to you know, lose all this weight, so I'm going to stop eating bread, I'm going to stop eating sugar, I'm going to do two-a-day workouts, and how that lasted for two weeks, but I didn't give you, you know, the second half of that, the part of that that worked. And um, so it kind of ties in with what we're talking about tonight. And so after those two weeks, and I was like, this isn't going to work, I said, God, I've got to make some healthy choices in my life, and it's time for me to be healthy. I'm old enough. I should be eating like an adult, <laughs> and um, I need to make some changes, because um, at some point in your life, you realize um, this isn't easy. This stuff just doesn't go away. Whatever you put in, it doesn't just go away, and then you have to actually do something about it. So um, I prayed, and I did not move as quickly as I did the first time. And I just took my time because I'm like, I've got to do it. I don't really want to do it, but I know it's the right thing to do. And I'm just going to chill out. And so anyway, long story short, um, found this eating um, plan. And it wasn't, it's not really focused on weight loss. It's actually focused on getting healthy. So number one, I had to change my mindset. So I wasn't, you know, I had set this unrealistic goal that I was going to lose all this weight, but what really needed to happen is that I needed to change my thinking about eating. I need to change my thinking so that I could make good choices when it comes to food, you know, all those different things. So I learned this, you know. I'm in my 40s, and I learned this, <laughs> you know? You can't just always eat sugar and expect your body to be able to process it and do all those different things. I got an accountability partner, got in the Word, you know, did these different things. And as a result of making those changes, you know, the, some of the weight loss came. But more importantly, I've learned why I was choosing food at different times. I had this bad habit of every time I'd go to the mall, I had to have pepperoni pretzels and a blueberry lemonade every time I went to the mall. And then every time I went to this store, I would always stop by Farm Basket and I would get Cluckitos. And then every time I went to this store, I would go and get a Philly cheesesteak. Mm-hmm, it was good. And then when I go to this store, so I was like, how come every time I go somewhere... It was all associated with food, and it was always junk food. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. But when I had to stop and tell myself no, it's like, wow, I have to stop and think about this. I have to stop and think about what I choose. So that's what we're going to do. We need to stop and think about what we're thinking about and why we make decisions that we make and why we choose things that we choose. And a lot of it is based on the thoughts in our head. And we condition ourselves. If I do this, then I have to do this. If this person says this, then I have to do that. So 
Um, uh, Sunday night, we talked about there are two types of thoughts, positive, life-giving, Bible-based thoughts, and then negative, fear-based, lying thoughts. And you have a choice to think either of these thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 in the New Living Translation says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And as I pointed out before, if this was really a natural thing for us, then God wouldn't tell us so many times in the Bible that we need to do it. So it's not an automatic response. It's something that we have to continually work on, which doesn't make it a bad thing. We always have a choice. Every single time, we always have a choice. No matter what happens to us or what is done to us, we always have a choice how we react to that and what we do. We may not be able to change the situation and what's going on, but we can always change how we act and our attitude in the situation. We always have a choice. God has equipped us and given us the power and the tools to change the negative thoughts that we think. There's a powerful scripture that talks about this, and that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And I'm going to read it in translation. It says, we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow down in obedience to the anointed one. We have the ability to capture those negative thoughts and make them bow down to the word of God. We have been given authority as children of God. And we can use our authority to take captive the things that come against our thoughts. Amen? Number one, we have to identify negative thoughts. So if you think something long enough, it becomes your belief. And we've talked about this before. Your beliefs determine your decisions and your decisions determine your direction. And your direction becomes your lifestyle. So we constantly have to think about what we're thinking about. Put your mind in check. Stop letting it run wild and rule you. And it helps as a practice to start with the little things. You know, little things come into your mind like, eat that cookie. <laughs> you know, sometimes if we just practice with those little things, you know, I told you what happened to me with that burger. I went and got that burger because I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And then some, somebody told me Sunday night, they were thinking about popcorn all day. And they had popcorn and then came back Sunday night and ate more popcorn, but they had popcorn all day. So those are things that we can practice where it's not like, you know, not life-threatening or whatever, but, you know, we take that thought captive like, no, I'm not going to have a cookie. Mine, you're not going to tell me that I need a cookie. I'm sorry if y'all leave here tonight and that thought is planted in your head and that's the thought you have to fight. But anyway, <laughs> I used to have that thought all the time. Every time before I went to bed, I made fresh chocolate chip cookies. I would have six cookies a night before I went to bed. And I got it down to an art because Monica told me how to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie. And it, was, it worked. Like you put it in, she told me the exact time, how to do it. And every time I pulled it out, it was perfect. So every night, six chocolate chip cookies, fresh baked, warm out of the oven. Yep, now y'all gonna have to resist that thought. <laughs> Take that thought captive. <laughs> so your beliefs come directly from your thoughts. And if you remember Sunday night, we talked about the forest and how if you, your mind is like a forest and if you think something long enough, then you'll have a clear path that directs you to that thing. And so um, we need to remember what we're thinking about. And we should have a clear path that directs us straight to God. 
We should have a clear path that directs us straight to the truth. And that's how our thoughts should be driven. And that's our goal. That's what we're working on. You have to think about your thinking, what you're thinking about. Number two, determine negative, to determine negative thoughts, you must determine false core beliefs. We have to determine the false core beliefs. So since we know our thoughts determine our beliefs, we must look at our beliefs and see if they line up with the truth of the word of God. See, a lot of times, you know, we have healing service every third um, Sunday night, and one of the reasons why we do that is a lot of people have a lot of different beliefs when it comes to healing. And, you know, some people believe healing isn't for now, or healing isn't for them, or, you know, God can only heal a, a cut on your finger, but he can't heal cancer in your body, you know? And so that particular service is spent teaching the truth on that vital subject. And so, you know, a lot of people, before they can receive, there has to be a change in their mind, which is a change in their belief system. And sometimes you have this, this belief deep inside of you and you don't even realize, you know, when you hear something, your mind automatically takes it and processes it and puts it in a place where the word is coming through and you're like, ah, oh, that's not for me. Oh, he can do this, but he can't do that. Or, you know, I'm such a bad person, I don't know if God really wants to heal me. You know, and we, we process it through our belief system when he says, just come like a child and receive that word and believe that it's for you. And so that, you know, we have to challenge and really stop and look, what do you actually believe? I remember as a, a teenager, you know, going through that. When I graduated high school, I was like, I've gone to Christian school my entire life. I want to go out and I want to experience the world. And so I went to college and I probably went to one of the most worldliest colleges <laughs> that were ever out there. It was absolutely crazy. But the one positive thing that came out of that situation was I challenged my belief system. I had to determine if what I was taught in church my whole entire life, did I really believe that or was that because I was made to go to church as a child? Was I believer, a believer because I believed in Jesus or was I just going through the motions? And I learned in that season to read the Bible, to trust God, to really believe him for myself and then I found a God who loved me and who I could serve. And my beliefs were challenged. And in the end, I came out victorious in him. And I realized the word is true. The word works. He loves me. You know, all these important things. So sometimes we need to not be afraid to ask questions. You know, challenge. You sat in church all these years, but just because you've been in church for 40, 50 years doesn't mean that you have all your beliefs correct. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. But if we want to continue to grow in God and grow in the things of God, that's how you grow. You stop and you go, you know what? Let's take this particular thing. Let's take healing or let's take the basics of salvation and let's restudy that again. Let the word come alive to you on different subjects. So if you don't like the outcome of a certain area of your life, change your belief about it. If your thoughts are not lined up with the Bible and are false, they're lies, then your belief will be lies. Your decisions will be based on lies. The direction of that part of your life will be based on lies. So then your lifestyle will be based on a lie and not on the truth. So right now, we're going to look at a couple of common false core beliefs that people have. And this may be something that you're, you know, dealing with. Failure is not okay. The future is not good. I can't get anything right. I'm worthless. God is not helping me. God isn't meeting my needs. 
People can't be trusted at all. I'm too bad to be loved. I'm not lovable. I'm always left out. I don't fit in anywhere. Nobody loves me. I am alone. I can't change. It's not okay to finish last. It's not okay, not okay to be vulnerable. There's no way out. I have to be good at everything I do. If I don't excel, then I'm inferior and worthless. Criticism is always bad. I have to do everything perfectly. It's not okay to ask for help. If I ask for help, that means there's something wrong with me. It's not okay to fail. I should never fail or disappoint anyone. I have to help others. If I don't, then I am bad. I have to make people happy. Now, like I said, we went through those quickly, but these are the things that you know, we'll have in the download for you to look at because maybe that's something some thoughts that you may be having. To determine if you believe these things, you have to read through those things and decide, yeah, maybe I felt like that before. Maybe highlight some of those things. And then those are the things that you go after because those are lies. And those type of lies mess up your belief system and challenge your relationship with God. If you think you're alone, if you think you're, you can't be forgiven, if you think you're too bad, all of those different things, then you're not able to receive God's full love for you. You're running around thinking that, you know, it's pointless for me to try to serve God or being a Christian is so hard because at the core of your belief, you haven't really fully believed that he's forgiven you. That stuff matters. Because if you're constantly in this state of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, and I'm not, you know, this and that, you're not able to receive all the good things that Jesus did for you. You're putting a wall between you and him and saying, I'll take this, I'll take that. Mm, no, I'm not good enough for that. Maybe not this one, maybe not that. But no, we need to challenge that because we are children of God. We need to challenge the lie. Whatever lie that you are facing in your life, you need to challenge that lie. Take negative thoughts and beliefs and expose them to the truth of God's word. So we're going to go through, the next slide is a challenge the lie worksheet, and that's something that you can download as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through a lie and we're going to challenge that lie. And um, really, it's, it's something that I had a challenge with. And um, my personality, I, I'm so thankful that, that God helped me and he, he got me the right help. And, um, you know, the, the lie was that I had to be perfect that I had to do everything right, say everything right, show up at the right places, be all things to all people, you know, and that's a challenge that I still work through. But for the most part, you know, I've gotten through a lot of it. Amen. <laughs> but I'm not perfect. I'm human. And when I see that thing rise up again, I have to go after it again. And I'll keep going after it until it's completely gone. So it's probably like if it was a five, it's probably maybe like a two or three. Sometimes it could be a five and sometimes, you know, you just have to work with it. And so we're going to put 2 Corinthians 10, 5 in action. And um, we're going to challenge a lie. And every time those thoughts come, you might have to pull out this, you know, worksheet that we're doing. And basically what you're going to do is whatever lie you have been challenged with, you write it down at the top of this worksheet, and then you're going to find 10 scriptures that are truth that combat that lie. And that's what we're going to do. Yep, 10. 10. Because that one lie, you need to hear 10 things, 10 pieces of truth to combat that one lie. 
And it's something that you can go over and over and over and over. And so um, the lie that we're going to challenge tonight is God's love is conditional and based on how good I am. If I mess up, God can't love me. And those are things that, you know, if you're a perfectionist or whatever, that's, you know, basically the, the mantra that's going on in your head. If I mess up, can God really love me? You know, am I accepted? What are these people thinking about me? And so here are 10 truths to combat that one lie. Truth number one, God is capable of forgiving me. 1 John 1, 9 New Living Translation says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. Truth number two, God already knew the mistakes I was going to make, but still sent his son to die on the cross. John 3, 16, for this is how God loved the world He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Even though he knew we would mess up, he still sent Jesus. Truth number three, God doesn't hold my mistakes against me. Romans 8.1, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. You see how the truth is, is challenging that? Truth number four, nothing can separate me from God's love. Romans 8, 38 through 39. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. As you're going through the word, you'll get encouraged. You'll see, wow, why was I believing that? Look at this good God. Truth number five, God loves me no matter what I do. His love for me stays constant because God doesn't change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Truth number six, God has forgiven other people when they mess up and still love them, so he will do the same for me. And these aren't particular scriptures, but David, Moses, Paul, They all killed people. They were forgiven and used by God. So if they're murderers and God can forgive them, I mean, let's think about it. We think we do something and when we ask for forgiveness and we're truly repentant and we're like, but God can't forgive me. What about this and what about that? That didn't stop them from doing what God called them to do. He had great plan and he had great purpose for their lives, but they had to walk in the forgiveness that he had for them. If they didn't, they couldn't have moved forward. So just think about that. Have you murdered someone? If you have, there's still forgiveness for you. (laughs) Truth number seven, I don't have to be perfect for God to love me. Second Corinthians 12, nine says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Truth number eight, Even when I mess up, God turns it around for my good and teaches me. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Truth number nine. God accepts me for who I am. Romans 5, 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still 
sinners. Number 10, God is always there for me. Hebrews 13, five says, don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. You are not alone. See what that does for you? See how encouraging that is? When you take the word, that one thing that's been nagging you, God's got 10 things to say to combat that. So when the devil comes after you to try to say you're this, you're that, you're a failure, you're, you know, whatever those false core beliefs are, you take the word of God and you challenge that lie. Because maybe it's something that you kept hearing, you kept hearing, and you let it take root. It's time to dig up that root. Dig it up. Don't just cut the branch off. Don't just wake up and turn that worship music on and say, I'm just going to sing it away. No, you add the word to that. You sing, you rejoice but you get the word on it and you speak the word 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 and and it may take some time. The reality is it's going to take time, but that's okay. Keep doing it. Keep speaking the word. The word works. The word works. When your thoughts are truth-based, then you will establish healthy core belief. True thoughts produce true belief that leads you to the right decisions and point your life in the right direction, which will produce god Filled lifestyles. It's a continual process. We continually take thoughts captive. And when you have control over your thoughts and truth based beliefs, your life will be stable. It's worth you fighting for, it's worth you doing the work, it's worth you partnering with God, it's worth you getting to know his word. And that's really what it is. We have the word of God right here. And so many people don't open it and read it. So many people rely on somebody else to give them the scripture. But it's so much power. You know, they've say, they say, you know the saying, knowledge is power. Knowledge of the word of God is power to you. His word is life and power. Everything that you need can be found in the word of God. So why would you not read it? Why would you just rely on social media for your devotion for the day? And what is so-and-so saying? And what are they preaching about? And what is the word for the year? What What is the word for every season of your life? God's word, and he wants to show you his word. Now, here are some healthy core beliefs. This is what the word will help you develop. My future is very good. I can overcome getting hurt. No one can ruin my future. Tragedy transforms people. I am good enough. My worth is not based on what I do. God cares immensely about me. I am loved even when I'm bad. I'm lovable as I am. I fit in where I am supposed to. I can be happy even if I'm on my own. I am capable of enduring and surviving being rejected, abandoned, and alone. It's okay to be vulnerable. I don't have to measure up in every way. 
Those are just some of the ones I highlighted, but maybe there's something in those core beliefs that you need to highlight. It doesn't mean when we think these thoughts and when we have our thoughts correct, it doesn't mean that we're not going to be challenged with negative things. It doesn't mean we're not going to be challenged with negative thoughts. Jesus told us that. In this world, you're going to face some junk. In this world, there are going to be people who are against you. In this world, everything is not going to be perfect. But be of good cheer. He said, I've overcome the world. And we are in him. So we are overcomers. Every day you wake up, you're an overcomer. And we need to pull on that and continually remind ourselves of that. Get in the word every single day. James chapter one, verses two through six in the NIV says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Ask God. He will direct you. He will give you the wisdom that you need. We have power over our thoughts. He's given us Jesus. He's given us his word. He's given us direct access to him. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask him. Ask him. He's right there. He shouldn't be our last go-to after we've tried everything else. Oh, yeah, let me, let me ask God. I've done all this. I've tried to figure this out. I've tried to work through this situation. I tried to make this connection. I tried to put these things together. If I just, you know, do this or do that. You, no, our, our first thing should be to go to him. He's loving. He's kind. He's a father, just think if you're a parent and your child is having a hard time, you want them to come to you. You don't want them to go to their friends and get their friends' advice or go to this person or that person or whatever. You want to make yourself available to them so that you can love on them and direct them to the truth. And that's what God's doing. He's like, why do you keep asking all these other people? Why do you keep going over here? Why are you living in the self-help section of the bookstore? Why are you going to all these seminars and doing all these things and you haven't started here? That stuff's not bad, but if you don't have this as a basis in your foundation, if you're not even taking for free and doing the word of God, if you haven't started here, then you're not going to get anywhere. Now, granted, sometimes we need a little extra. Some of us have been through some real crazy stuff in life, and it's going to take a little bit much to get through some of the things or some of the beliefs that we have. That's great, but this should always be your foundation. Wherever else God directs you, whatever help God directs you to, it doesn't mean that you let go of the word. But that's just something you put on the top. It's just like if you, you, you have something wrong in your body and you pray and you ask God for healing and you have to have surgery or you have to take a medication or, you know, whatever that is. That doesn't mean that you just say, ah, this didn't work. I got to have surgery. No, no. You keep speaking the word, you keep speaking healing, you keep looking into the word, you challenge every fear and every thought that comes to your mind, and that's just an added extra. It's not instead of, it's with, with him.
with his word, with his power, with his ability, with him leading you and guiding you and walking with you, you're not alone. And you'll see as you open up the word and you start going through your word, he'll become so alive to you. And it'll be just like you're sitting at his feet and he's directing your steps through the word. Write this down. Go to this scripture. Here's the word. We're going to do this together. And as we speak his word, his power connects to that word. And things start happening, happening in our lives. You'll never have a victorious, stable life until you do the word of God. Do this now. Develop healthy thoughts. Get your belief based on the truth of God's word. If somebody in your life is feeding you negative stuff, you need to challenge that person and challenge that relationship. And maybe that person is not who you should be listening to. Maybe you need to put them in time out. Your life, your decisions, the plan he has for you, it depends on it. Don't be afraid to do the word. What you think is 100% up to you. When you change your thoughts, it will change your beliefs. It will change your decisions. It will change your direction. And it will change your lifestyle. How many of you want to change? Amen. Every day. I don't want to do the same thing I did yesterday. His mercies are new every morning. I want to leave the mistakes of yesterday in the past, all the wrong choices, the fact that, oh, I didn't keep my mouth shut, or, you know, I I got this wrong or I got that wrong. I want to leave that in the past. And I want to wake up and I want to say, thank you, God, for this new day. Your mercies are new every morning. I thank you, Lord, for a supply for today, that you give me everything I need for today, that my steps are ordered of you, that I walk in love. I walk in your wisdom. I walk in your strength today. I walk in your peace. I thank you, Father God, the things that are before me that seem so much bigger than me. I thank you that you give me wisdom, wisdom to make the right decisions, favor with the people that I'm working with, favor wherever I go. I thank you, Lord, that you connect me with the right people, that every one of my needs are met for today, one day at a time. Take his word one day at a time. One day is enough. 24 hours before you is enough, let alone to try to think about 48. 24 is plenty. Hour by hour, is plenty. Sometimes that's, that's my day. I wake up and I'm like, all right, give me strength for this hour <laughs> while I'm getting dressed. Give me strength for this next hour. Sometimes that's what it is. I'm challenging this thought. I'm challenging this. I believe the truth. I know the voice of my father and only him and his voice will I follow. I will not be deceived by the enemy today. I will think your thoughts. I will walk in your way. Talk to yourself. You talk to yourself when you mess up, so you might as well talk to yourself. (laughs) before (laughs) you mess up. Amen?